Good morning, church family. I want to welcome each of you today. If you're a visitor or regular tender, we just pray that your time here will be very pleasantly spent and that you'll leave here today knowing that you've been in the house of the Lord. <clears throat> I have a couple of announcements. I'd like to bring your attention to the to the um, today's bulletin. This evening at 6.30, we'll have Vesper service here. And uh, there are several things that go on through the week. The, uh, each night, uh, we have something going on in this church. We are blessed to have plenty of activities going on. I'd like to also bring your attention to the the fact that on the 13th, we'll have a leadership seminar. That will be next Sabbath afternoon. A leadership seminar at 5 p.m. At uh, On the 20th, at, what is the, the Spanish thing? What is it? I don't speak that, so. Huh? Oh, service in the Spanish. Okay, service in the Spanish. On the 20th, and then on the 21st, International Food Fest, something we all love. I add another inch to my belly. I would uh, also like to point out to you we had our registration for our school this past week. This year we have 28 students so far, with some more. Uh, with more in the uh, that may work out there. So our school is coming back from the the COVID problem and uh, and it's filling back up and we're just uh, very happy about that because there will be because our students will be getting a good education and uh, a good and they'll be learning about Jesus something it won't be getting in the public schools. Uh, also on this coming Monday night, there will be a meeting with the elders and the pastor here. So it'll, it'll be a monthly meeting that we have. So if you're an elder, 6 p.m. is when we start. <clears throat> Today is our final reading in the book of John. If you will turn with me to uh, chapter 21, the final chapter of the book of John, chapter 21. This has been a, a very interesting study going through the book of John and if everyone is there, I'll be reading out of the it's actually the Andrew Study Bible, which is a New King James Version. And uh, says, after these things, Jesus, Jesus showed himself to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, or the Sea of Galilee. And on this way, he showed himself Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. And they said, we're going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat. And that night they caught nothing. But when morning had come, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? And they answered, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, 
it is the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had taken it off. He had removed it, and he plunged into the sea. But the other disciple came in the little boat, for they were not far from the land, about 200 cubits, dragging the net with fish. Then as soon as they had come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid on it, and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have caught. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land, full of large fish, 153. And although there were so many, the net was not yet broken. Jesus said to them, come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then came and took bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, feed my lambs. Then he said to him a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. Then he said to him a third time, Simon, or son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he had said to him the third time, he says, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you're old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to them, follow me. Then Peter, turning around, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved, who also had leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, who is the one that betrays you? Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, but Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, if I will that he remain till I come, what is it to you? Follow me. Then this saying went out among the brethren that this disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die. But if I will, he remain till I come, what is it to you? This is a disciple who testifies of these things and wrote these things, and we know this tes his, that his testimony is true. And there are many other things that Jesus said, which if they were written by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain all the books that would be written. Amen. Would our praise team come up and let's worship the God, our God in heaven. Amen. Is anybody grateful this morning? 
It is a beautiful Sabbath day. The sun is shining outside, and we can sing praises to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we all sing together above all powers, above all kings, above all nature, and all created beings, because uh, Jesus is above all. Can I get an amen? amen? We sing together loud and strong. Let us sing. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. Above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what you were. Sing together. to our God. Amen. Amen. We sing together now in gratitude for what he has done. Above all powers, above all kings. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all God. Amen. Amen. Aren't you grateful that Jesus Christ died for us on our behalf on the cross and now he paid the penalty that we needed to pay, right? And now we have life, eternal life, just like we see in the gospel according to John. 
Now we're going to move forward and we're going to sing loud and strong. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you pay. And let us sing together as we worship our Lord and Savior. Worthy is the Lamb, is what the book of Revelation says. Amen? And we all sing together, believing that this is the case. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you pay. Bearing all my sin and shame.
Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Worthy Amen. is the Lamb. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, Lord, thank you so much for this blessed Sabbath day. Hallowed be your name, Lord. Amen. Lord, thank you for your loving and gracious character. And Lord, thank you for the birth and sacrifice of your sons for our sins, Lord. Lord, we humbly come before you and ask you to forgive us of our sins. And we ask for you to be with each and every one of us in, in our church. And Lord, thank you for the blessings of the school. Be with Pastor Nunez as he speaks your word today, Lord. And we just ask for the Holy Spirit to be present. These things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand with me as we sing our opening hymn, I Will Sing of Jesus' Love. If you want to look in your hymnals, it's on hymn um, number 183, and it's also going to be overhead. So number, I Will Sing of Jesus' Love. brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath. Uh, today's uh, the open offering will be for the local budget. Who can God outgive? In First Chronicles 29, 14, it says, but who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you and we have given only what comes from your hand. Our generos generosity is inspired by God's generosity. In preparation for the construction of the temple, the Bible reports about generosity of Israel. First, King David gave lav lavishly out of his personal treasures. Then the other leaders gave willingly. Following his example, inspired by their leaders, the rest of the people gave freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord. 
1 Chronicles 29, 9, seeing an expression of generosity, David burst into praise and mentioned the factor driving such a profusion in giving. Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. Verse 14, David considered giving as a response to what God had already provided. Election, forgiveness, presence, promises, and abundance. No one can outgive God. Even if someone chooses to give everything, God has all the means to replenish that person's resources. This was the mindset of David, a leader, giver in Israel. Abraham, a Messiah man, had a similar mindset. He was the owner of a thousand head of cattle and large herds of sheep and goats. According, acknowledging that God was the source of his blessing, he decided to be faithful to God. He placed his cattle in large pens and counted them as they walked through the chute. Every tenth cow Abraham dedicated as tied to God. His friends and acquaintances were amazed. In their cultural culture, people's wealth is measured in cattle. One doesn't just give away his cows. They began to mock him, and many people declared him to be crazy. But the laughter abruptly, abruptly stopped nine months later when 40 of Abraham's cows gave birth to twins. In addition, many of his goats and sheep birthed triplets. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Numbers 23, 19. This week, as we worship with our tithes and offerings, let us reflect on the truthfulness of these words in our life. Lord, your generosity towards us has no limit, and it embraces all aspects of our existence. Make us generous as you are. Will the deacons please come forward? Heavenly Father, thank you that your promises are certain. You are faithful, and I can trust you. Your word promises that we will be happy to give our talents, time, and money to help others. Your kingdom needs us to be generous, selfless, and joyful in our givings. May the seeds we sow become healthy, productive trees of life. God bless and keep us. Let your face shine us, shine on us. We ask for your peace and favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Savior. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. Try it again. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, bigger boys and girls. Does anyone know what kind of animal this is? Casey Ann, do you know what kind of animal it is? What? It's a sloth. Now, sloths live far away from us down south in Central and South America. And they live what's called the rainforest. They live way up on top of the trees called the canopy. And <clears throat> they only come down from the trees when they go for a swim, which they're good swimmers. And um, they uh, have to go to the bathroom. Otherwise, they live in the trees. The sloths eat mostly leaves, but they also eat flowers and fruit and stems and twigs, small lizards and insects. And because what they eat doesn't give them that much energy, they're very slow in their movements. They're so slow that algae grows on them, which is a small plant, and it helps to camouflage them in the trees so that their enemies like jaguars and, and uh, harpy eagles will not get them. But you know that the Bible says not to be slothful? Proverbs 18.9 says, He who is slothful in his work is a brother to him who, who is a great destroyer. And Proverbs 21.25 says, The desire of the slothful man killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. It's okay to be a sloth if you're an animal that lives up in the forest, 
but it's not okay if you're a person. Casey Ann, would you like to have prayer for us? I don't pray everybody in the world. We keep them type and all you put on it. All the children need to be good and kind to other than people. All the parties and all the danger. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You can go back to your seats now. Those that are able, we kneel. Father in heaven, thank you for another Sabbath that we're still able to freely come worship you. I pray that you be with everybody here, for those who are not able to be here, for all the things that are pressing on our minds and our hearts. You know the needs and the situations, and help us to, to be faithful and trust in you in each one of those. Pray a special prayer for Sheila today as she is uh, ministering in an area of people to whose primary focus may not be you, but uh, bless her efforts in planting seeds and help those seeds to grow. Continue to bless the motorcycle ministry in the various areas that they, they go out and minister in. Um, be with Pastor Eddie today as he delivers the sermon help our hearts to be open to receive the instruction you've given us and thank you for the past 21 days of going through john and the lessons that you've taught us help us to apply those lessons and even when things don't make sense like fishing all night and then you say throw your net on the other side help us just to to be obedient and to be the blessing and receive Good morning, Panama City Saints. I hope that you are blessed this morning. The Bible says in Psalm 30, I will exalt you, Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not allowed my enemies to triumph over me. Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you healed me. Amen. Glory be to God. I have had so much fun going over the book of Psalms. It is a source, it is a wealth of strength, empowerment, wisdom. So I will encourage you to do so. And uh, in the process, you are also worshiping and adoring. So uh, Psalms uh, is always a great blessing for my life. And I would like to uh, urge you and invite you to go and read one Psalm a day now that we're done with the book of John. Uh, is anybody grateful this morning? Amen. Can we get an amen? amen? Can we get a hallelujah? Can we get a glory be, to God? glory be to God? What a great day to be in the house of the Lord. To those of you who are joining us online, thank you so much for being there. Uh, um, a good number of our church families traveling today. There's a group that is out at the beach. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. And there's others who are traveling as well. But for those of you joining us online, may the Lord be with you. We also have uh, friends and visitors. If you're a, a friend or a visitor, will you raise your hand right, right now? I won't ask ask you to stand up. Just raise your hand. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five. Now, Panama City Saints, let, let's share with them the love of Jesus Christ, and just let's wave our hands up in the air in appreciation and acknowledgement. Thank you so much for being there. Also, to the ones online, letting us know where is it that you are joining us from. If you are a Facebook user, raise your hand if you use Facebook. 
okay? We do not encourage the use of, the use of Facebook in the church, right? But we're going to give you 30 seconds to go and just share the live stream broadcast so that others are able to hear the Word of God this morning. Panama City SDA is our Facebook page, and you're able to go there, like the live stream button, uh, the live stream broadcast in the like button, and then share with others. It really makes a difference, and I just want to share with you that our live stream broadcast and everything that we do on Facebook now on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, is reaching over 4,000 people, and I can just say glory be to God, amen? Over 4,000 people being reached every single week or month. Yesterday, we did have a children's Bible study. We will have this program for the next six weeks going into the second month of the school year, and then they will remain with adventurers and, and pathfinders and so on and so forth. It was a blessed Bible study. As you can see, we were going through the doctrine of God, and we talked about uh, His character. We talked about the Bible. We talked about the Godhead and the Trinity. It sounds like a lot to unpack, but we did our best, and I believe that they had a great time. So please continue to pray for this class of Bible studies for our children. We know that our children is a great point of interest for us, and Ellen White talks about the highest of the highest things that we can do uh, from an evangelistic standpoint is to make sure that our children are being uh, exposed and presented by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Just like I said, there's a group of us, probably almost 20 of us, of our young adults who are out in the beach uh, with a conference-wide uh, young adults retreat, right? We have a, a youth from all over the conference, from Alabama, Mississippi, and Florida Panhandle united there. Me and my family, we cannot wait to uh, go there and join them, join them this afternoon. So I... Uh, uh, will um, solicit your prayers, not only for our group of representatives, but also for the event itself. I do, do not know if the pastor that is coming, he has come from Texas, but wherever he's coming from, let's keep them in our prayers so that they are blessed in this uh, specific event. We do have a, a very special event coming up, and it is our International Food Fest, okay? Do you enjoy eating like me? <laughs> <laughs> if you do, it's going to be on a Sunday afternoon, okay? Why Sunday afternoon? We will have to prepare some things, so we want to be respectful of, of the Sabbath day. So uh, a Sunday morning, while we have our, our uh, friends from our, the church that rents our space here, we can work that at home and then come in the afternoon. And we will have so many different countries and cultures represented. Feel free to bring, to bring a meal, a plate. If you cannot bring anything, it's okay. You can just join us. Remember that one of our points of emphasis for the summer is to connect. So the point of this event is for us to get to know each other, to share a little bit more about who we are and our background and where is it that we come from. So please mark it down in your calendar. Raise your hand if that sounds like uh, an interesting event to participate. Raise your hand if it does. I know that you uh, like to eat, so please come and join us and also share with our brothers and sisters in Christ, International Food Fest. This coming Sabbath, we have a leadership seminar. That does not mean that you have to be in uh, a board position to partake of this blessing, okay? We are going to talk about the Big Four, which is a book that I've been sharing with the elders uh, and also in our, with our board in our leaders retreat last year. The content, it will not be the same, so if you are interested in getting to know and get involved to serve Jesus more effectively, this is something that will bless your life. It is going to be at 5 p.m. here at the church, and I will give you more details this coming Sabbath. So please mark it down in your calendar. Last um, Sabbath, we had our couples retreat. Raise your hand if you are here for the couples retreat. We have, uh, we have a couple, okay? We have a couple. So right here, we uh, spend some time in prayer, praying as couples. It was a wonderful time of instruction and just being reminded of how good uh, uh, the, the Father's love for us. He is the source. He is the means through which we are able to share love with our spouses. And um, it was a great blessing 
to share some uh, uh, tools and resources. Here we have uh, the guys, right? The the the, the male are always is always uh, uh, compromised, and they have to go and do something for the ladies, and that's what they did, right? They went and distributed some roses, but it was it was it was a good time for us to be uh, here together. Uh, with that being said, um, let's move forward to our last moment within the pastor's comments. As many of you may know, the school year starts this coming Wednesday, the 10th, August the 10th. And I will urge you wholeheartedly to please pray for every single child that will step his foot into a classroom in this coming year. Not only thinking within the confines of our school here next door, but every child anywhere, may he receive the proper instruction or she, right? May they receive what they need so that they are in this understanding that Jesus Christ is coming soon, amen? But now we want to dedicate a specific time to pray and intercede, not only for the students, but now for the staff and for the teachers. In order for us to do so, I will invite invite uh, our school board members to join me here in the front with the exception of Brother Mark Rice and uh, Sister Kathleen. All the others, please come and join us here in the front. And uh, what we're going to be doing is that we would like to invite um, our staff, school staff from Adventist Christian Academy. We have a little token of appreciation for the staff and the rest of the members. This is a pin that I thought it was super appropriate and nice. It says, uh, this is what it says, um, a path to Jesus. Amen? Amen. A path to Jesus. A uh, journey to excellence. And lastly, it says, uh, I cannot see. Adventist education. Amen? Amen? So now, Brother Mark, the principal of our school, please join us here in the front. Sister Becky, uh, Sister Kathleen, uh, Miss Penno, please join us here. And where is Miss Christine? Miss Christine, where are you? Please join us here in the front. And um, we will go ahead and we will have a special word of prayer for our school, our staff. Uh, we should give it up for this uh, men and women of God. Amen? Amen? Thank you so much for all that you do. And we pray showers of blessing. This is not a job. Amen? This is a life calling. I truly believe that. This is a life calling. So thank you so much, guys, for being here. You mean so much to us. And we would like our church family to bless you and to pray on your behalf and to intercede. And now before I pray, is there any other, uh, maybe a teacher in the room, a retired teacher? Please stand at this moment. We would like to include you in this prayer for everything that you do, for everything that you have done. A sister, God bless you. Thank you so much for being here and thank you for your service. Uh, Brother Johnny, God bless you in the back. Sister uh, uh, Jessica, thank you so much for all that you do. And now we will have a word of prayer. Amen? Amen. Let's lay hands if you guys want to come here a little bit closer. Dear Heavenly Father, at this moment, we come before your presence. And in the same way that the apostles in the New Testament laid hands upon those who were being sent, we lay hands upon these women and this man of God who are being sent into the mission field, and that is to teach the Word of God to our children, Lord. We pray, we pray for them. We intercede on their behalf. We pray for showers of blessing. We pray for strength. We pray for wisdom. We pray for guidance. We pray for the anointment of the Holy Spirit. We also pray, Lord, that they are reminded of the life calling that they have accepted and the great responsibility that they have in their hands. Continue, Lord, to provide them with a strong health. Continue, Lord, to keep them everywhere they go. Lord, continue to bless their families 
families, allowed them to have so much abundance and, and, and spiritual wealth within their soul that they are able to be focused to teach our children and to lead them into all truth, Lord. We are grateful for the great work that they do for our children in our Adventist Christian Academy. So we pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit may be with them, Lord, and we are grateful, Lord, for everything that they do. On the same breath, Lord, we want to pray for those who are standing on uh, the sanctuary in the, in the middle of the room, Lord. You know where they serve. You know the many years that they have already served. Lord, continue to bless them in abundance and allow this school year to be a blessing for every single individual involved in the process, Lord. We are grateful for your love. We are grateful for your mercy. And now we pray showers of blessings as we walk into the 2022-2023 20, school year. We pray these things, not because we have any merits, but in the merits of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to Him be the glory. Amen and amen. Well, as we close our pastor's comments here, let's uh, say together our, our vision for 2022. We connect, we quit, and we grow at the count of three. One, two, and three. We connect, we equip, and we grow. Let's move forward in worship. Happy Sabbath, everyone. This song that I'm about to sing this morning, telling everyone that sometimes we have our valleys that we think we can't go through. We feel like giving up. We even have the mountains sometimes that we think we can't climb. We think of giving up. But this morning, this song is telling us that we should not give up. We must hold on because soon and very soon, all these trials and tribulation will be over. <clears throat> Have you a river you cannot cross? A mountain so high you cannot climb? Have you a valley you can? G. 
Jesus will come. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Our scripture reading is taken from John 20, verse 28 to 29. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because you has been has seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Here ended the word of the Lord. Good morning, Panama City Saints. Can you guys hear me? Let me say that again. Good morning, Panama City Saints. Welcome to the last message in our series, Through the Gospel According to John, right? Through the last three weeks, through the last 21 days, we have been studying the book of John, one chapter a day. Today, that journey comes to an end with John chapter 21 that Elder Bo was gracious enough to read with us earlier today. So hopefully, you've been uh, inspired once more through the person of Jesus. Hopefully, you've seen yourself in the different miracles, and you've seen him how he is able to provide for different needs. Hopefully, you are now in a, a better, you, you, you possess now a better understanding of his Holy Spirit. So, so far, we have talked about the seven miracles in the book of John. Raise your hand if you were here for that message, or the seven miracles, right? Remember that. We also talked about the seven I am statements. Raise your hand if you were here for the seven I am statements. You remember? And we also talked about the seven um, witnesses in the gospel according to John. Last week, we talked about John's unique teaching in regards to the Holy Spirit. And it was, it was a blessing for my life to uh, review and, 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 and come once more before the presence of the paraclete. Do you remember? A representative, right? An advocate, right? A helper. So we talked about these things. And we mentioned that John's purpose for writing the gospel uh, is evangelistic, as it is stated in John chapter 20 and verses 30 and 31. We've seen this before, but let me just read it once more so that we are able to make sure that we are on the same page. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may what? That you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. This is the reason why the gospel of John is written. This is why, this is why John took pen and was able to, you know, pen this, this information. So John takes his reader through a journey to determine whether or not Jesus is who he says that he is. He is considering his reader and saying, is Jesus the Messiah? Is Jesus uh, the, the Christ? Is Jesus the anointed one? Is Jesus the Son of God? So John's intent is to lead his reader into believing. Are you guys with me so far? Let's uh, let's pause here and let's make sure that we understand. So we already know in whom John is trying to make his reader believe and what he is trying to make his reader believe, okay? He wants his reader to believe in Jesus Christ as the Messiah, right? And he wants him to believe that he is the Lord. So this is what we know. Now, I do have a question for you. What else can we say about this idea of believing, right? Are there degrees of believing, right? Is believing enough to have a successful Christian experience, right? And ultimately be saved, right? These are questions that are posted we will try to answer all of these in our next message, so we will, on, we will expand on believing and what it entails. So please pay attention as we dive into our message to close out our series on the gospel according to John. So let's have a word of prayer, if you can bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, we come before your presence once more. And we ask for the leading and the guidance of your Holy Spirit. May we find you in Scripture in a way that we are transformed by this message. 
Help us to understand and ultimately believe. It is in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. And all God's people say, amen, amen and amen. First, let's start by defining what believing means. Pastor, but I know what, believe, what is to believe. Yes, maybe you do. But hold on one second. Bear with me here. From a secular Western perspective, right, we all know that believing entails persuasion, right, to credit someone for something. You believe that, okay? So we know this, but within the biblical context in the Bible, believing is a little bit more, more of a nuanced kind of word, okay? So it's a little different, the belief that you and I know in this 21st century and the belief that is presented in Scripture. So I would like you to take some time for us to define what's the difference, how is it applicable to us. So because if we take time to determine what believe means in Scripture, then we will have a better understanding of John's gospel and the purpose for which it was written. So let's, let's please pay attention to the word that is actually used in the Bible. Pisteo, okay? Pisteo comes from the Greek, and it is used 239 times throughout scriptures. That's a lot, okay? That is a whole bunch of times that it is used. So this is a biblical concept. It is crucial for us to understand that it has different meanings and separate nuances. Let's pay attention to this part. The first part Whenever pistewo is used, it's a mere acknowledgement of some fact or event. This is to refer to intellectual faith, okay? So the, fir the first aspect of the word pisteo, what it means is that it's based and rooted in your mind, in the things that you can digest, process, make sense of, right? So you have a first component that is more related to the understanding. Are you guys with me? Understanding is the first aspect of pisteo. Now the second aspect is deeper. Everybody say deeper. Deeper, right, is stronger. It says that pisteo can also mean a conviction and a trust that someone is able to provide aid either in obtaining or in doing something. You like that? Provide aid to help to come through, to bring about, right? So although the first aspect of the word pisteo is based on the mind, the second aspect is based on the heart. And it is not the case that you necessarily has to have to make sense of what you are trying to believe. That is not what the second aspect is seeking after. That is the first aspect. So I like to think about these two aspects as two separate types of believing. One is more inclined to the understanding. The other one is more inclined to what you actually trust and the confidence that you have ultimately in your heart. Are you guys with me? So you have two different aspects, okay? Now with that being said, let me, uh, let me share how is it that John, even from the beginning of his gospel in the prologue, is addressing the first aspect, the aspect of the mind, the aspect of the head? These are just important theological terms in the prologue of John. And when I say prologue, I mean John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18, right? He's talking about this important and big theological words. He has the word God or theos, right, in the Greek. He has the word life, zoe, right? In the Greek, light and darkness. There's a contrast in there to send. He's talking about John the Baptist as the forerunner. He's talking about belief, right? And this is the belief that is rooted in the mind. He has the witness, true and truth. He has the word, the word, the, the, the world, and then to know. So this to know, there's another reference to the mind. Also, if you move forward, you have born of God. You have glory, only begotten. You have the Father. You have Moses, and that is a first Old Testament reference. Now you have to see. And the ones that are with the asterisk, is that how you say it? Asterisk are not necessarily repeated throughout the whole gospel, but are key to the understanding of John, the word, the logos, right? 
We also have the tabernacle, another Old Testament reference, right? You have grace, you have fullness, and ultimately you have to explain. So what John is trying to make his people believe or his reader believe starts where? Starts where? In the mind. Everybody say the mind. That is the starting point. If you're seeking after believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and He who says and He is who has who He says that He is, you need to understand it in your mind. The mere acknowledgement of some fact or event. He's talking about intellectual faith for starters. However, this is not the only reference that he makes. Before we move forward, let me show you another instance in which we know that this is the case, starting in the mind. There's cer certain conversations that Jesus had with individuals throughout the gospel, and these were private. Jesus had a conversation with Nicodemus, yes or no? Yes. He had a conversation with Nicodemus. He had a conversation with the Samaritan woman, chapter 4. You go down in, within the context of the resurrection of Lazarus, chapter 11, and he has a strong and very confrontational conversation with Martha. Yes or no? So Martha, you have Pilate later on in chapter 18, and you also have Mary Magdalene and ultimately Peter. We're going to get to Peter in just a moment. But throughout this individual conversations, note that not everyone is in the same degree of believing. Does that make sense? So the, the, the type of faith, or I'm, I'm not going to call it faith, knowledge, that Nicodemus as a Jewish rabbi and teacher has is not the, sa the same type of knowledge that the Samaritan woman has. Are you guys with me? So Jesus is meeting people with this idea of believing in the mind first, but he's taking people wherever they are in their believing journey. Okay? He's taking Pilate, for example. A Gentile, someone was not even a Jew, right? He was a Roman officer, and he's having this conversation so that Pilate may believe. So here we know that Jesus uh, describes, or John describes this idea of believing in the mind as the starting point, and yet he is able to address individuals wherever they are. We have a, a couple of Gentiles here, but note that we also have Jewish and rabbis and teachers and believers already here who are struggling with the same issue. Oh, Panama City Saints. Well, if the, if the gospel according to John is with, with, with the uh, intent of evangelism, I am already in the church, I don't need to read it. No. Right? Because here in this individual conversations, we see that despite the evangelistic aspect, there's someone that you need to know. Amen? There's someone that you need to be confronted by, okay? There's something that is missing in you that needs to be addressed. So Jesus is having these conversations with this individual. Now that we have defined and expanded uh, what believing means in biblical terms, we can move forward to address the degrees of believing, right? Starting point in the mind goes deeper and better into the heart. Note that it is not John, John's um, purpose to claim that head knowledge is the destination of the journey. Are you guys with me? The intellectual knowing of a fact, the acknowledgement of someone of something is not the destination. It's just the beginning. That's where you start. That's where you're supposed to, 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 to part from, okay? It is the beginning and starting point. So with this conversation, we just proved that we have several degrees. Now, there is a distinctive emphasis in the gospel according to John. P look at this. In regards to what the disciples understood before the resurrection and after the resurrection. Are you guys with me? What the disciples understood and the type of belief that they have before the resurrection is not the same understanding and it's not the same belief that they had after the resurrection that they were able to die for Christ. What happened? There's a journey. 
The journey is real. The journey is true. The journey is biblical. Now, let me give you one case in point. John, John 2, 18 and 19. So the Jews answered and said to him, What sign do you show, show to us since you do these things? This is within the context of the cleansing of the temple, right? Jesus comes and he sees the money changers and what happens? He took those, uh, how do you say those things? Whips, yeah. He took the whips and he started to, to turn the tables, right? And after these things, when the Jews are, are, are looking at this, he said, what this, who is this guy? What is he doing? Under what authority are you doing that? Now you have to show us a sign so that we understand the reason why you're doing this. Then Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will what? I will raise it up. Let me ask you, was Jesus referring to the temple in Jerusalem? He was referring to what? To his body, to the resurrection, right? So here we clearly believe, it says, it says, Then the Jews said, it has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you will raise it up in three days? But guess what? He was speaking of the temple of his body. Let me ask you this. Did the Jews understand what Jesus was referring to here? No. Now my question is, did the disciple on, disciples understand? They were with Christ, right? They left uh, the, the, their profession, right, as fishermen, and now they were with the Master, going through the dusty stre streets of Galilee, right? They've seen miracles, and they are in the midst of all this, and yet, in the same way that, uh, let me go forward, in the same way that the, that, that the Jews were not able to understand, guess what? The disciples were in the same situation. Therefore, when he had risen from the dead, the disciples remembered that he had, what he had said to them. And they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. So listen to this. It was not all, 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 until after the resurrection that whatever Jesus said at the beginning in the cleansing of the temple was clear in the minds and in the hearts of the disciples. So there was a journey that only as the starting point and as the turning point, I should say, is what it was the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. From head knowledge, from mind, to a deeper type of understanding. Now, with that being said, John's point here is that the disciples needed to pass the temporal mark of Jesus' death and resurrection before certain things that Jesus taught not only make sense, we are beyond making sense, but also were wholeheartedly accepted. Going with Jesus renouncing to their profession, and yet they needed to understand. They needed to believe. <gasps> they needed to believe. They needed to pisteo. Now, John makes this same type of sharp distinction between the, the, in, in where the disciples were and when they ended up after the resurrection, at least 16 times throughout his gospel. You see that? So John is trying to prove this point, and he wants his reader to make sure that he understands that this journey is real, that this journey is true. That the fact that you say, I believe something, is not necessarily mean that you uh, keep it in your heart in the way that Jesus supposed you to do. Now, if the resurrection represents such a turning point in this journey, and this is a journey from trying to understand to actually believing, we do well in spending some time considering the Passion Week, okay? Let's talk about the Passion Week for a moment. This is what the Bible says. Ellen White says, I'm sorry. Uh, Steps to Christ, page 103. Christ and Him crucified should be the theme of contemplation, of conversation, and of our most joyful emotion. 
as of right now, from a human perspective, we are saddened for the, 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 how he was flogged and the, everything that he had to endure. But from a theological standpoint, we say, glory be to God. Amen? Because he paid the penalty that we needed to pay. He took our place. He took care of our sin. And now we have access to the heavenly father. It is because of Christ. It is because of Jesus. It is because of the cross. They buried him. Crucified him and buried him. And on the third day, he resurrected from among the dead. Glory be to God. And that changed everything. And now we have an opportunity to actually believe. Did you know that Christianity is the only religion that is based on a historical, factual event? If someone were to find uh, uh, Jesus' body right now, Christianity is a joke, right? Yes or no? But glory be to God, for he is risen. Amen? And now he sits at the right hand of the Father, right? Interceding for us. Now, why is it that we have to start with Jesus' trial? Well, this journey from mind to heart, from trying to understand, to actually believe, and use pisteo in the second and deeper sense of the word, starts with humility. You might think that Jesus humbled himself at the cross. But I should say that Jesus started his his, his journey towards humility at the trial. Why is that? Well, simple. There's so many illegalities in the trial of Jesus. First and foremost, we have to make a distinction between the Jewish trial and the Roman trial, right? In the Jewish trial, we see uh, Annas and also Caiaphas, right? We see those, these two individuals, the high priest. Uh, first of all, when he's addressing Hannah, no witness is presented, right? Did Judas come back and witness against Jesus at some point? Have we ha- do we have any records of a witness coming and, and presenting his case so that uh, is a decision that is rightful is made on behalf of Jesus? No. So no witness is presented, and there's, uh, then there's this guy that struck Jesus' face, right? Completely illegal. When he goes down to Caiaphas, right? First and foremost, the trial was hosted or held at night, right? Against the law. The trial at the place of Caiaphas rather than in a proper court. Illegal. And now I'm thinking uh, uh, about my children, that they, they say this all more often than not. Not fair. Have you guys heard that? Not fair. Oh, Panama City Saints, Christianity and our relationship with Jesus goes way beyond of what's fair. And there are trials that we will have to endure despite being unfair. We have talked about these two books, the book of signs and the book of exaltation. Have you ever thought that towards the latter portion of the book of John, the book of exaltation, the book of glory, you're thinking about this great king that is coming. What is he that he does? He dies for us. He's taken, he's he's flogged, he's slapped, he's uh, mistreated, right? And that is the exaltation. That's the glory. Are you guys with me? Christianity is way much more than being fair. It's a relationship with Christ. It's the opportunity and the desire to humble yourself before Him. Now, that is the Jewish trial. But when we move forward to the Roman trial before Pilate, notice that no charges are uh, uh, presented or brought against Jesus. Pilate three times says, I find no guilt. Right? So how is it that he ends up in the cross? 
No witnesses are produced in, trial, in, in, in Pilate's case. So charges are based on politics rather than evidence. I'm telling God to lead me on how to continue. The point that I'm trying to make here, Panama City Saints, is that Jesus' trial shows that logic, head knowledge, processes, rules can be broken. And they are not a guarantee of a fair outcome. Are you guys with me? They are not a guarantee of a fair outcome. So after his resurrection, Jesus has spent how many days? Forty days, right? Forty days before ascending to heaven, making sure that the disciples not only understand, that the disciples are only not using the first phase of pisteo. He wants to make sure that the disciples have made that journey from the first phase to the second phase. And now they have a deeper understanding. Now they truly believe. Now they can die because of the gospel. Because after the cross, now they have made the journey. Does that make sense? And this is what we find here. So Jesus wanted to confirm that although there was so much more to be understood, the disciples actually believed. Listen to this. Jesus' resurrection appearances to his disciples at least three times. First, on the evening of the, that first day of the week, the same Sunday of the resurrection, he comes and he provides for them the commission. Go! Spread the word. Make disciples, right? He gives them, Jesus gives them marching orders, right? If Jesus would have not been seen bodily after the resurrection, they wouldn't be able to die for Jesus. They died because they see, saw him in the flesh. The journey was completed. So the focus here is commissioning. Then a week later, the following Sunday, we have Thomas and his unbelief. Sister White calls Thomas, Doubter Thomas. Unless I touch his hands, right, and his side, he needed to believe. We're going to talk about Thomas a little bit further. And afterward, Jesus, the third time, appears to them, and he reinstitutes Peter. Now, with that being said, this is what John 20, 26 says. And after eight days, his disciples were again in sight. And Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the, stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. There was the first time that Jesus came and appeared before the disciples, but Thomas was not present, right? So the other disciples came and said, Thomas, we've seen the Master, we've seen the Lord, He's alive. And Thomas said, no, 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 I need to believe. So at second time, while, while, while they are united, and I love this detail, the doors being shut. How is it that Jesus got in there? Oh, we serve a mighty God. And there's no door that can kept him, that keep him away. He has a way. And when a door is closed, he finds a window. He is Jesus. He comes in their midst and then says, Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believe in glory be to God. I want you to complete the journey. From phase one to phase two. Pisteo. And this is what Thomas says according to our scripture reading. My Lord and my God. What is the purpose of John in, in writing his gospel? What is the purpose? Let me go back. Believe what? 
Believe what? Believe what? It says, But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Christ can also be translated Messiah, the Anointed One, the Lord, right? And along with His designation of His purpose towards the latter portion of chapter 20, moving on into chapter 21, in this interaction with Thomas, we have Thomas affirming exactly almost with the same words, that the purpose has already been fulfilled. Amen? Amen? Do you see that? Do you see the beauty of Scripture? Do you see how, how organized and how deep this is? So the Messiah, my Lord, my God. And Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have sinned, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not sinned and yet have believed. Today, we don't have the resurrection to be that turning point. But we have a cloud of witnesses. Amen? We have the Bible. We have our own experiences. We have those who came before us to show us that we need to complete such a journey. Amen? Where are we in that journey? We have the Messiah, verse chapter 1, chapter 4, chapter 7, chapter 9, 10, 11, 12, 20. The Messiah is presented throughout the gospel. We have the Son of God, chapter 1, 3, 5, 10, 11, 19, 20. These two titles are scattered all over the gospel telling you, you guys have to believe, but it's not enough that you had knowledge what you're learning, Steps to Christ says, it is impossible for our minds to fully understand the character or the works of God. Even the brightest. I am not the brightest. That I know. Even the brightest, best, educated people cannot fully understand such a holy being. He will always be a mystery. Well, I need to believe, right? So there's a disconnect here. Or is there is. I think that we have read the believing aspect of John within the confines or of our first face in the mind. When John wants his readers to read it in a deeper meaning in the heart. It is a proven fact that there's exactly 18 inches from your head to your heart. How many inches? 18 inches. And yet, is the longest and most difficult journey that we will ever experience. Does that make sense? Where are you in your journey? Have you started the journey? Oh, pastor, I started 25 years ago, 40 years ago. Guess what? In the same way that Jesus was able to have a personal conversation with Nicodemus and the woman at the well and Pilate, right, and Peter and Thomas, Jesus wants to have that personal conversation with you today. At this point in time, here. And he will address you and he will find you and he will join you where you are. Because he wants you to make the trip. He wants you on the other side. He wants you to reach the final destination. 
Pastor, but I am such a sinner. I have made so many mistakes in my life. I feel like Jesus will not, will not be able to receive me. Oh, Panama City Saints, as we close out here. So uh, the, uh, John 21, 15 says that when they had eaten breakfast, and these are the disciples, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, this is the third time that he appears, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? In other words, do you love me more than the disciples? More than, the, the, than what you love the other disciples? Do you love me more than your friends? Do you love me more than your family? Do you love me more than those around you, that your inner circle of, 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 of support and influence? Okay, do you love me? And then he said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. He said, feed my lamps. And then Jesus said a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know I love you. So go and tend my sheep. And then the third time Jesus said to him, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And Peter grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, <laughs> why are you asking me three times if I love you? Why are you keeping ask you keep asking me this? You know that I love you, Jesus said to him. Feed my sheep. Panama City Saints is being believed by many scholars and Bible experts that the main reason why Jesus asked him three times is because Peter denied Jesus three times. Can I get a witness? It doesn't matter where you are in your journey. Jesus wants you. It doesn't matter where you are in your journey. Jesus loves you. It doesn't matter where you are in your journey. There's so much more for you to understand. There's so much more for you to grow. There's so much more for you to exhaust. There's so much forgiveness for you to embrace. There's so much Holy Spirit for you to continue to grow. Jesus wants you. Jesus is able. Jesus is the one that is coming and asking you, come and believe in me. Jesus. And we say, thank you, Lord. Amen? Amen? Glory be to God. Now, as I close here, this he spoke signifying by uh, what death he would glorify God. And then after these things, he said to him, Jesus said to him, what? What? The journey was completed. From a theoretical set of rules, facts, dates, acknowledgments, to a wholehearted, actually pistego, believing in the heart. It is my prayer this morning, Panama City Saints, that as we embark ourselves in this journey, we are able to understand that no matter where we are, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you've done, no matter how long you've been in the church, it doesn't matter how much you know, it doesn't matter how long you've been, it doesn't matter what position you hold, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter your previous denomination, it doesn't matter what you've done in the past. It doesn't matter if, 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 if whatever you've been, your background, your language. What, what matters is that Jesus invites you to believe that he is the Son of God. And he's calling you this morning, follow me. So Panama City Saint, if you've heard the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to you this afternoon, I will ask you in the mighty name of Jesus to say with me, I will follow you. To come to the front. And we want to have a special word of prayer with you if you would like to say, Jesus, I need you in my life. I want to do this journey. I want to perform this journey from 
head from mind to heart. I know that the resurrection is not here for me to see, but help me not be like Thomas. I want to be that blessed soul that believes without seeing. Oh, and although I have seen you in your word, although I have seen you in my own experience, I don't need to understand everything because I will not be able to exhaust the great wealth of who you are, your presence, your character. So Panama City Saints, we will have a special word of prayer here in the front. So who will be the first one to come and say, I want to embark myself in this spiritual journey. Glory be to God, brother. God bless you guys. Can we get an amen? amen. God is good. Amen? amen? God is faithful. God is sovereign. His love. God is with us. God is for us. God. Send his only, only, his only son, Jesus Christ, for us. Do you guys want to follow Jesus? Do you guys want to follow Jesus? Yes. We want to follow Jesus. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, you know who we are. You know our story, our background our brokenness. What a great blessing it is to know that no matter where we are in the journey, you can meet us where we are. And we say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And we want to tell you, Lord, we don't want to be like Thomas. But we do want to say, my Lord and my God. As we are confronted by your presence through the work of the Holy Spirit this Sabbath afternoon, Lord, I pray for every single individual in this church. Amen. You know what they're going through. Would you please come and have a personal conversation with each and every single one of them? Amen. Would you please meet them and show them that in you we are able to fulfill this journey from head to heart. Amen. Amen. Help our unbelief, Lord. We say that we believe. But are we willing to give up our lives for you? May this journey of confirmation and strong faith be completed in our lives. Thank you for your presence in our midst. Thank you for everyone who came through the front. And I pray that throughout this week, we are able to enjoy your blessing and your favor in our lives. It is in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. God bless you, Panama City Saints. Seeds, let's remain standing as we sing our closing hymn, number 524. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Number 524.
please bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we can be here together celebrating you and your life and your word and just celebrating each other together as Christians. And please give us strength and, and blessings this week as we go about our business. You give us hope and faith, educate our minds and convict our hearts that we may believe in you and that we may follow you through that conviction and that strength of belief. Bless us, keep us, and give us faith. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. You may be seated.